Ladies and genitals, welcome to Swatch's Valentine's Day special. Now please put your hands together and go crazy for Eleanor Gabrielle! Okay, uh, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy, happy V-Day, because uh, not everyone likes to celebrate Valentine's Day. Uh, and I do have a few alternatives for you, just in case you don't like to say Valentine's Day. Uh, so my favorite, you can use a different word that starts with V, so um, uh, happy vodka day, right? Uh, yeah, for the singles, um, the Russians. And the Russian singles, uh, <laughs> Vasha Sidrovia, yeah, super. Uh, also, uh, happy, uh, happy Voodoo Day, yeah, um, because it's kind of obvious. Um, happy Vasectomy Day, because nothing says I love you like snip snip. And uh, my personal favorite, happy Velcro Day, yeah, because even fabric deserves an appreciation day, yeah. <laughs> And also, fun fact, you can actually wear an entire Velcro suit and then go and see your crush and then just hug them and they'll never let you go. <laughs> oh, cute. Uh, but it's, uh, I want to be inclusive on this uh, Voodoo Day, so I do want to uh, acknowledge everyone here tonight. So um, the people here in relationships, <laughs> well done. <laughs> Uh, I would also like to acknowledge all the people here tonight who are negative of a relationship or relationship adjacent. Um, well done, guys. I'll see you at the bar later. Thank you. Uh, uh, also, like to acknowledge those people that are in that weird kind of like, yeah, we've like been texting every day for like the last six months and I think we both like really like each other but we both like have a lot of like insecurities and vulnerabilities so we're just not gonna text each other on Valentine's Day because we just don't want the other person to know that we actually really like them and so yeah, like that's just we're gonna leave it like that. <laughs> yeah. Well done. <laughs> And finally, to those who are, oh, those of you who have just gone through a breakup, a heartbroken, oh, well done. And fuck them, yeah, right? <laughs> but I, I'm, uh, I'm single this Valentine's Day. I mean, last Valentine's Day, my vibrator broke, which was a great start to 2020 and for what was to come. Uh, <laughs> this this V-Day, uh, I am single for the first time in a few years. And being single on Valentine's Day, it's, it's difficult, right? Because everyone's like, oh, oh. <laughs> right. And you know how I, you know I'm single is, um, because I'm wearing leopard print. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing says single like leopard print. <laughs> That's great. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I went through I went through a breakup last year uh, in the middle of a pandemic, uh, middle of lockdown. He cheated on me. Don't be jealous. Uh, but like all of that is awful. But also the worst part of it was that I had to move back in with my parents. Mm here that's independent and over the age of 25 that's ever had to move back in with mum and dad? Oh, nothing. Nothing makes your lady garden drier than moving back in with mum and dad. Just <laughs> all moisture, gone. Right? And for the, for the men here in the audience, I feel like yours would just be like a little, like a sunflower that hasn't seen the sun in a while, you know? Just, just a bit droopy, you know? Just a droopy little sunflower. It's nice. But uh, I think when you go through a breakup, people always give you the same advice, that same advice. And you, you know what that advice is? Go out there and fuck everyone, <laughs> fuck them all, fuck all his friends, fuck his mum, fuck everyone, right? You're like, thanks for the advice, mum. But also, like, we're kind of in the middle of a global pandemic. Don't really, don't really, really want to go out there and fuck everyone and be labeled as a super spreader, you know? Don't want that on my LinkedIn profile. Thank you very much, you know? But it's difficult going through a breakup. And, uh, and you want to like, cause them pain for the pain that they cause you, you know? Like, the, you want that revenge story. Because there's so many different stages of going through a breakup, you know? The first stage is, like, crying yourself to sleep every night and just, like, eating a fuckload of Ben and Jerry's, you know, that stage. Uh, and the second stage, that's my favourite stage, that's, like, the, that's it. <laughs> I'm going to get hot stage. We're like, I'm gonna go to the gym every morning at 6 a.m. I'm gonna lose all this weight. I'm gonna look amazing. I'm gonna look like a fucking celebrity. So that one day when I'm walking down the street in slow motion, <laughs> I'm gonna see my ex and he's gonna be there and he's gonna be fat and disheveled with pussy boils coming off his face and a snowstorm of dandruff coming off his now bald head. And he's gonna be holding a little sign because he's homeless, by the way. 
and he's going to look up at you and be like, oh my God, oh my God, please. Please, please, take me back. Please, 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 Eleanor, please. My life is falling apart without you. Please, please. And I think I have nits and a little, like, remaining tuft of hair on the back of my head. Please, please, take me back. Please, please, please. And you're going to look down at him, look into his eyes and just say, I fucked your best friend. And it was the best sex of my life. And then you're going to get up and you're going to strut away and get into your Mercedes with your sugar daddy. That doesn't work. You know why? Because Ben and Jerry's, that's why. Yeah? <laughs> so it's difficult uh, being cheated on, going through a breakup. And uh, people always tell you, like, when you go through a breakup, they're like, oh, just, like, just, like, let karma get them, Dave. Just let karma get them, you know? Just, like, just kill them with kindness, you know? Just be better. Be best. <laughs> like, yeah, that doesn't stop me from wanting to burn his motherfucking house down, you know? <laughs> I was like super hurt when I went through the breakup with my ex. And, and the thing is when you're cheated on, you, you question everything, you know, like you're so broken. You, you like question everything, you're like, oh my God, was I, not, was I not attractive enough? Like, did I not love enough? Like, was it that time that like, I finally got the like ingrown hair out after six months and I was super excited and then like I ran to like show it to him and like then measured it and was like, oh my God, it's like three inches and then left it on the bathroom counter for the next six months because I was super proud because he wouldn't give me children. Like, was it that? <laughs> but you do, you question, you question everything. And the, the thing is like, I was cheated on and <laughs> I found out in like a really weird way. I found out, um, through Netflix, yeah. Uh, the global streaming, yeah, you guys know it, good, Netflix. Uh, because I'm that person. Uh, but in uh, the Netflix settings, so you're all gonna go home tonight, you're gonna see who's using your Netflix account. Uh, in the settings, you can actually find out where, like the location and device that has logged in to your Netflix account, which is great to find out, you know, for all the leeches. But I went on there and I found out that he was at the other girl's place, because there's always another person, right? And I noticed, like, they were, like, using my Netflix account for, like, their chill time. Like, I'm sponsoring their Netflix and chill, right? And I so wish that there was, like, a part, like, in the settings where you could actually, like, change what they're watching whilst they're Netflix and chilling. You know, like, they've just got something on, like, mellow in the background. I know, like, a David Attenborough documentary, right? And then you just change it to, like, a murder documentary. Like, just like, ah, 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 right? And so, and then they change it back to the, like the David Attenborough documentary. And then just as they're, you know, like, like in it, like five minutes in, then you change it to like a Holocaust documentary, right? Because no one wants to look to that, you know? When, when we broke up, I, I knew, like I was seeing that he was still using my account after we broke up. And that was really fucked up, but I was like, that's it. This is my revenge story. I'm gonna change the Netflix password. Mm, I'm gonna change it so that, like, cause in my mind, it meant that they would like never have sex again, right? I don't know why, but I was going through a breakup, leave me alone. Uh, and so I went to change the password, but then what happened was, is it backfired on me because then I had to spend three hours on the phone to mum and dad to explain to them how to change their password on their smart TV. <laughs> And then I had to spend another three hours on the phone to my auntie to explain to her how to change her Netflix password on her laptop. <laughs> and then I had to spend another three hours on the phone to my third cousin to explain to him how to change the password on his iPhone, right? Yeah, I'm Italian, okay, guys, right? You know what happened? He texted me the next day. He's like, Eleanor, what's the new Netflix password? And because I'm so nice, I sent him the new Netflix password, you know? Like, I was like, Eleanor, like, oh, why do you do this, you know? And that's why I do this job. I do this job because I love making people feel happy. I don't do it for the ego. I definitely don't do it for all of, like, the lack of any romantic interest after the show. I do it because I want people to have a good time, right? And, uh, and so I'm just too nice. I'm too nice. And so I come, I was like, Eleanor, why did you send him the new password? And, oh. But I was like, just let it go, you know? Eleanor, just let it go. Just karma's going to get him. Karma, just be better, Eleanor. Just be best, you know? So, I, but I think throughout the whole process of going through a breakup, the worst thing that happened was that I lost a song. I know, I lost a song. Because you know when you're in a relationship, you always have that one song that reminds you of, you know, your relationship. Like, I don't know, do you have a song that reminds you of your relationship? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. What is it? Tell me. My boobs. 
my boo. Oh, but that's cute. That's cute. Like, it'd be really fucked up if it was like, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I can't believe like that is actually some people's wedding songs, right? But, you know, like sometimes you got to listen to the lyrics before you, you know, you figure this sort of stuff out. But my, with me and my ex, like, our song was Umbrella by Rihanna. You know, like, Umbrella, Ella, eh, eh, eh. Also, fun fact, that's what I sound like when I have sex. Uh, <laughs> and the thing is, like, it's such a dope song, but also super fun because now I don't own an umbrella. Because when I went through the breakup, every time I would reach for an umbrella, I'd just start crying. And I know it's so stupid to have a custody battle over a pop song from 2008, but it's Rihanna, okay? Like, that song is fire, all right? And I just wanted my song back, right? Because I also have a playlist of, like, all the people that I've slept with or dated in my life, and I put, like, a song in the playlist, just, you know. And I know that sounds creepy and stalkerish, but also, remember, I did find out my ex was cheating on me through Netflix, so I'm embracing it. Um, it's great. But uh, the last part, the last part of going through a breakup is when you have to, you know, give them their shit back. You know, you sort of have to collect it into a box and your friends are like, hey, why don't you just burn it? I was like, I don't know, the same reason why I gave him the new Netflix password, okay? I'm too nice, you know? So I decided I was gonna go meet him because I hate myself, um, but also because I really wanted that revenge story. Like I just wanted to strut into the restaurant looking like super fine and sitting down there and like legally blonde style. Like just like, yeah, I'm doing like really well. <laughs> uh, so I went to meet him at this restaurant and I like was looking so good. I was feeling great listening to like Lizzo on my way to like, the restaurant. I get there, but it also started raining as I get there, right? And because I don't own an umbrella, Ella, Ella, I rocked up looking like Samara from The Ring, okay? So I rock up and I was like, fine, Eleanor, just impress him with your intelligence. Just, you know, beauteous and everything, just impress him with your intelligence and how great you're doing, right? So we're sitting there and it was so awkward. Like, it was so awkward. And I used to love this when I used to work as a waiter. I used to love going into a, like, you know, going up to a couple that just looked like they're about to break up. Like, it was like, mm, mm, tasty. It was so good. And I remember this one time I went up to this couple, right? And, like, all I heard as I delivered the latte was like, yeah, so you just got to get your tits out. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I want to stay, right? I love listening to that. But this was so awkward between me and my ex. And as we're sitting there, he asked me, he was like, hey, Eleanor, like, what do you what are you doing with your life these days? Like, you know, what are you, what are you up to? And I was like, oh, um, yeah, like, I'm, I'm finally learning German and I'm, like, really, really good at it. Like, I'm doing really, really well. <laughs> That's a lie. Eleanor, why are you lying, right? I, don't, I still don't know German. I've been living in Germany. I still don't know German. And that's because my friend told me before I moved here that there was only two words that I needed to know when I moved here. Just ja, genau, right? Ja, genau, which means yes, exactly. And if you just say it and nod and like super confident, like any German will be like, oh, they speak Deutsch, great, right? So I'm there at the restaurant and we're in Germany, right? So the waiter comes over, looks to my ex, looks to me and then decides to address me first, which the inner feminist in me was like, yeah, but also I was like, fuck, because I knew he was gonna speak German. <laughs> and so he starts speaking to me. He's asked me a question, I assume, in German, right? And I look up at him and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> yeah, genau, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And then he looked at me uh, a little bit confused and then asked me again, a little bit more harshly, don't know if that's possible, possible in German, but he did. Uh, <laughs> And he said it again, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, genau, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then he just looked into my eyes and goes, if you don't speak German, then just say you don't speak German. Don't keep saying, ja, genau. <laughs> ja, genau. <laughs> so it was so, it was going so badly, right, with me and my ex there. And then he said to me, he was trying to be charming again. And he's like, babe, and he's like, yeah, like, you know, this food's a bit weird, but you always know how to choose restaurants. I'm like, I love that about you. <laughs> he's being charming, right? But for the first time, I, I was so happy being single. And I, I left him there at the restaurant, and I felt so free and so emancipated. And I, I took that little win, you know? Because I think in this current climate, we do. We need to take any little win we can get. You know those little wins, like, like when you find extra fries in the bottom of your McDonald's bag, just like, mm, just like, mm, 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 just oh, savor that shit, you know? So I went home, uh, changed the Netflix password, 
and then spent 16 hours on the phone to my family all around the world changing their Netflix passwords and because uh, I'm Italian and I went to bed super happy and I think the thing that I realized that night and I guess if I can leave you with anything on this uh, voodoo day, this Velcro day, this vasectomy day, if I can leave you with any bit of uh, advice, I guess, if you are going through a breakup, um, there's only a few things that you need, right? The first thing is time. That's what I realized. You just need time to go through heartbreak, you know, time to get over it. And the second thing you need is a really, really good bunch of friends. Uh, you know, those friends, because they're the ones that are going to be there at like 3 a.m. in the morning when you're like, oh my God, he was like cheating on me and I found out through Netflix. <laughs> what? Through Netflix? Yeah, through Netflix, right? <laughs> so keep your friends close. And the third thing you need and most important thing you need is a really, really great vibrator. <laughs> That's it. So now you probably think like, oh, Eleanor, that's the end of the story. No, it's not the end of the story. Uh, so I got a text message from my ex the next day. And I was thinking he was going to ask me for the Netflix password, right? But no, his text read a little bit differently. It was like, hey, uh, thanks for the restaurant recommendation. I'm in hospital. I have salmonella poisoning. <laughs> Calm as a bitch. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, hang on. He's got salmonella, Ella, Ella, eh, eh, eh. And guess who got her song back? Mm. Mm. Under my umbrella, Ella, yes! Thank you so much, guys. I'm Eleanor Gabrielle. Have a good V-Day!